Good day, everybody. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, I got this Mastercraft snowblower that's got an issue with it running properly. Only runs with the choke on. I'm pretty sure it's a carburetor issue, so we're going to take it apart, find out. Another possible issue is if, if the cylinder's damaged and compression is low, that would also cause that issue, but I'm pretty sure it's just fuel related. So let's get into this. All right, full choke. Let's hit the primer. So that's what happens when you take it off full choke. A 13 16 socket. Let's pull the plug out. Plug can tell a lot. You can tell it's running wet. So you can see this plug is brand new, no carbon buildup, and it's all wet. So before we proceed, we have the compression tester right here. And this is going to tell us the overall health of the motor. Because that's where we need to start. Do some pulling. So after a few pulls, it's bleeding off, but I had it up to almost 120. So compression is not an issue here. Engine's got good compression. Definitely leading out to a fuel system now. Because as I mentioned before, if you have low compression, that'll also give you a sign why it has to run with the choke on. And throw the spark plug back in. need to get this cover off pull that key out and then I got this piece just slide that off now I can start to remove everything else so on this snowblower is lucky it has a fuel shut off valve which makes it nice that way when you remove the carburetor you're not going to have fuel spray all over so I just have it all pulled apart here and this is the primer hose right here. The primer doesn't seem to be working. But the primer hose goes on there and it's pulled off. I wonder if it's just getting too much air if I just trim that back, reattach it, and see how it runs if I start it back up. Choke on. Well, it was worth a try, so it didn't solve my issue. So right now I'm going to remove the carburetor. And at this point in time, you can either clean out the jets of the carburetor, try to figure out what is wrong. But what I ended up doing is that I could get a new carburetor off Amazon for $25. So instead of like spending time, it's just for me, I'm just going to replace the carburetor and see what's going to happen. You do have to be careful when you're removing it because you got all these little tiny linkages and stuff. And it can be a little bit of a pain. You might fumble around. Uh, that fuel line is so rotted. There we go. So right now I just got it on the bench. Just going to transfer over all the parts from the old carburetor to the new one. Uh, pay 
close attention to your idle and main screw, how far it was turned in and out. Use that as a base setting point. You can also Google and find what the recommended set points are as well. That way you have a starting point and start it up and adjust it. But make sure you put the new gasket in, seal her up, reinstall it. And then once it's all back on the motor, you want to make sure that all your linkages are hooked up properly. You want to make sure that they work freely. Last thing you want to do is reinstall it and have the linkages wrong, which is going to cause you some more headaches. You want to activate the throttle, make sure that it works. Now let's see what's going to happen. So right now I'm just doing some carburetor adjustment, but this is the idle screw, but you need to adjust the main one, this one first, before you go to the idle. I just kind of threw these clips in out of sequence, but you kind of get the idea. And here we are running without the choke on, which is super nice. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. You can either fix your old carburetor or just replace it with a new one, whatever you find easier. Take care, everybody.